Hey, good evening. So, um, yes, a video, and as you can see, oh, Neutron Decay Cosmology, no doubt. That's what it looks like. I'll try and hold it still, you know, I'm very low on this tech biz, but this is a, uh, Putting together all the different sort of geometric elements regarding neutron decay cosmology into one unit and then sort of explain the process. So in this, I guess this would be uh, the black ball at the very center rep would represent one uh, quantum unit. Like it's a neutron it's a, a hydrogen atom because one decays into the other and one gets pushed into the other one proton electron complex the blue thing also this just will sit in the middle we'll ignore that let's just think of that as like time that's the core everything premise of neutron decay cosmology is if you don't all know already is that hydrogen gets compressed by gravity and compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed until here at the oop, right there. See, it's like the gravity slope only flat pushed onto a circle. But there, there's the event horizon, gravity. Gravity is this big arrow pointing downwards like that. Now this whole bottom half actually would be probably, this is, so this is a neutron falls through, decays into hydrogen. The hydrogen gets compressed. At some point it becomes a nucleon like a proton electron complex inside an atom way down in there someplace and then gets compressed even more and then becomes a neutron because a neutron is the most dense form of stuff and it's all wrapped up in a ball but when a neutron decays it turns into a proton and an electron a atom monatomic hydrogen so this is why the cardioid which is sums up all possible angles from tangent circle which is the entire universe and then angling 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 down and down and down and down descent until you are at the event horizon right there you're at the maxima where you've been crushed maximally and then i say you pop right through and you come out the next place where there's nothing at all because maxima and minima link now as part of this topology to close it off because well there's a couple of factors one is that we know from experiment that when you push particles beyond their limits they don't disappear and end up appearing last week next week or anything like that what happens is they basically get turned inside out and they become their anti. And I think turning it inside out is the best way of looking at it. If you had a ball and you turn it inside out, it's like everything is now pointed. What was pointing inside is now pointing outside. What was pointing outside is point, now pointing inside. What was rotating one direction is now rotating the other direction. So it gets turned inside out. But if that's the case, if you can turn things inside out you sort of have to now have a one-sided surface to be able to do that. So I'm going to detach almost everything. Ooh, do, 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 do. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. So gravity. And then there's the neutron decay. Is the sort of the, all of this gravity is compression. The one event in nature which is really anti-gravitational in that matter becomes 
less mattery is neutron decay. So to have this flow where you can go from inside to outside and outside to inside, that means we have to have a single-sided surface. Where's my curve? How do I get rid of my curve? There we go. Cool. So we still got gravity. And neutron decay. The bottom half is basically the expansion part of neutron decaying, and the top half is gravity compressing the two parts, expansion and contraction. Now, one thing you'll notice is I only half completed this surface. That's to a purpose. If we look right now, we can see that this cross section includes a Let's make this bigger. There we go. Two, there we go. Half. There's a full sine wave, a full cycle. But that's only half of the surface. And you'll notice that unlike a torus, this vector, this path, comes down, it's, let's imagine it's facing outward. It's facing outward, it's facing outward. It goes through, now, unless we, if we don't induce a rotation on it, it is now facing inward on that line right there. So this shape here is not a, doesn't have 360 degrees, it needs 720 degrees to be complete. So we will demonstrate that by pushing this little thing here where we see ooh, ooh, the U. We're going to make it go from negative pi to plus 3 pi, making 4 pi altogether because 2 pi is not enough. 2 pi gets you one lifetime as matter, but you need also to be living a life on the antimatter side to fill it all out. There we go, you exploded, now you're coming down into the event horizon, boom, you went through the event horizon, but now you're antimatter, and you did it again, boom. Okay, it goes backwards because of the nature of this program, but Reset. The path is a double. It takes two because this is a single sided surface. Being a single sided surface, any point on the surface has a sort of an inverse corollary on the other side, an inverse of itself on the inside and yet they are not distinct sides they're more like regions i have one region displayed here there's like two regions to the totality it's not two sides really it's because they're connected at the event horizon and this connectedness at the event horizon which is maxima and minima touching is an artifact of compactified time. Compactification, as per limit theorem, forces closure between maxima and minima, some in some direction. And the one that our universe seems to have chosen is energetic maxima and minima, in that there is a minimal energy that we don't seem to be able to get less than of. And there is a maximal energy where it curves and something weird happens and the topology gets all whack. Right? So this is an artifact of this. 
this is problematic. Yes, it is. And maybe this is part of the whole mystery of the universe thing that, you know, good will, that there's an unknowable, a place where since everything is there, there's no discernment possible. There's no way to compare one thing to another when there's everything. It's like, whether it's gray or black or white, if this uniformity of intensity, or overwhelming intensity, then there's no sort of, you can't tell where you are, but suddenly you can, because then you emerge in deep space and you know that there's only one direction from this point in space, that is down. There is up, like on Earth, we can try and go up, but that takes effort. The way everything natural operates, generally, unless there's a collision, here are collisions, is there's one direction, and that direction is down. It is gravity. And it's pulling you towards an event horizon. And when you hit the event horizon, which is maxima, you reconnect with the minima, and now you're in a deep void, and you're a neutron, and you just decayed into some hydrogen. And this is the premise of neutron decay cosmology. Just trying to link a bunch of things into this as a little geocalc unit. But yes. Okay. Peace.